This is a Romanian Draco Mini. I uh, purchased it right after they came out. And I recently received the paperwork from the ATF allowing me to manufacture it into a short barrel rifle. So I just wanted to document the process. A couple of modifications. Tango down. Uh, BG-16 style pistol grip but for the AK and not much else going on wanted to keep it vanilla <clears throat> oh uh, I modified the thread protector so now uh, you can actually take the thread protector off uh, that just required a little bit of Dremel work other than that, this is a vanilla Draco Mini, and uh, we're going to go through the parts and stuff that I have set up and show you how it goes. I've never done it before, so you know, forgive me if I screw it up. Here are the accessories set aside for this project. Some of the basic AK upgrades, Tapco G2, single hook, I believe most Romanian AKs use the single hook, the Draco Mini does use a single hook. Midwest Industry Handguards, FDE, uh, one of those Shepherd Crooks, this one was affordable and looked like it had good quality, I'll see if it works in the Romanian. Ace folding mechanism set up to have an M4 receiver extension tube uh, a free green red dot sight from a friend a Nevesky receiver end plate QD and a castle nut for a receiver extension tube a Voltor receiver extension tube for shotguns it has a plug in the back for putting extra stuff. I really like these for AKs and shotguns because it has a cap in the end and you can put your NFA paperwork in there. Miscellaneous 10 30 second thread screws. Hopefully some of these will work. And a brand new tap and die set for doing 10 30 second threads and I'll need to do this to machine two holes into the back of the receiver trunnion. So first thing that you gotta do is on the back of the ace it has a little notch that's proud so I'm gonna grind that flat and here's the rear of the receiver for the AK so after that I'm going to line up the back the receiver and get that squared up and mark some lines on there so I can drill holes in the right spot. <clears throat> so before cutting any metal just did a dry fit assembly of the stock kit put the uh, receiver extension tube on there and there's the Nevesky quick detach which just fits in the ace. I had to tap it in there this is how it will be folded over with an LMT SOP mod stock on there. See how it looks extended. Okay, so there it is laying on the table. That's my normal favored stock extension length. So it looks like it will line up pretty good. And if I don't get it just right, luckily they slotted the hole so you can get some up and down movement in there. So you can fine tune it so you can get the right comb. That's what it looks like before I start cutting metal. Here's the receiver extension tube with the plug off. So there's your little hole that you can put paperwork into. I think it's great because I always keep a copy like a color Xerox of my NFA paperwork and whatever suppressor I'm running curled up in this tube 
so I have it on the weapon if I ever need to you know present it to somebody to show that it's in a legal condition there it is so going through it LMT stop mod stock ace folding mechanism with the M4 style receiver extension the Vesky quick detach end plate uh, I don't remember who made that just some mil spec castle nut it has the little stakes in it Voltor receiver extension tube for shotguns uh, works great on AK shotguns on the Draco Mini, I've got a Tango Down or a US Palm pistol grip. It's just like the BG-16, I love those. And then a vanilla Draco Mini. Okay, here we are, the AK. Time to start working on it. So, first thing we do, make it safe. Make sure there's no round in the chamber. Okay, good to go. First thing we need to do is set up the back here and the back here to attach each other. So you can see the ace comes with a little channel, a, ri a raised part. I guess that's to fit their stocks. Uh, we need to grind that flush so that it runs flush with the trunnion back here. Step two will be after that's flush fitting it up to the back and taking a pencil and marking the center lines of those slots. And those center lines of those slots will be there and what we'll do is we're going to shoot to put the through hole right in the middle of the slot. If you do that it gives you the best ability to slide up and down and use the slots for adjustment. And how I want to have this set up is right like that. That's what I'm going to shoot for. Let's see how it goes. There we go. It's all chopped up. Ready to grind. I have it masked off just to keep the metal flakes from uh, getting inside the mechanism. Okay, so here it is using a cutoff wheel and a little grinder wheel. Ground it flat. I'll touch that up with a little bit of paint first, but just to environmentally seal it. Because uh, you're going to have aluminum from this block going onto the steel trunnion. Those are dissimilar metals and they liken themselves to corrosion. So what I'll do is I'll paint this black before attaching it, but I'm going to make sure with a fit check that it works. There's the block lined up on the back of the receiver. I think that's about where I'm going to want it. Time to make my marks. Okay, so I took the end of the receiver block and marked the slot lines on there. So you can see them on the back of the receiver. So now it's just shooting the spots. This is a drill and tap set picked up from Home Depot. So for this is for number 10 32nd UNC course thread and this is a little tool to help guide it so I think it was maybe 15 bucks for the set here's the ace adapter after it's been painted this is where the machining was done Got one hole through. It's a number 10 size hole. Using a hand drill, it's not the greatest 
tool, a drill press would be better. But I've got it chalked up here on this bench. I'm going real slow. And I haven't broke the bit yet. I'm through a whole battery though, so hopefully I have enough charge to do the other hole. All chalked up, ready to go. Uh, one thing I did, which I didn't hit on, was uh, I drew X's on the back of the receiver, right at the right spot. And then I took a punch. And I put dimples right in there as guides. So it's a basic machining practice. So hopefully I can keep the bit straight until it bites. Follow through. There we are, second hole through. Just ran out, just barely made it with my batteries. So you can see the light coming through the rear trunnion. Nice clean holes, very deep, very thick. Okay, all chalked up. Starting the process. There's a number 1032nd UNC tap and the match drill. Okay, if you've never done a tap and die operation before, I haven't done them since like, you know, high school machine shop, but what you do is you you work to your thread. This is where I left off. And you always do your turn. Okay, I did one full turn. And then see these grooves down here, they allow you to take the chips out. So you back it off. And I was taught for every full turn forward you do a half turn back. And then I'm back at the next starting point. So it's real slow, you go all the way down, don't rush it, and it works every time. Okay, so I made it through, and now I'm chasing all the way down. Just clean those threads out. Now I'm going to back it all the way out, nice and easy. And then I'll chase this with a number 10 bolt. Okay, it's all done. Ran a quick bolt track. This is a NASM 1801-3. I'm not sure the dash number, maybe dash 7 for length. And I just chased both holes with a looped bolt just to make sure the threads all worked. Here it is. Okay, so I got the bolts just kind of loose, loosely put in there, and the whole pattern matches. I lucked out. The whole goal of this was to get this edge flush the side of the receiver. I think I got it pretty darn close. I'll slowly wind these down. Okay, so there we have the receiver end plate on. Sort of flush. Got my FDE paint job on it. One little note, comment, without the receiver extension tube attached, this thing is really hard to lift up off this with the spring. With the receiver extension tube attached, <clears throat> uh, it's a lot easier.
Okay, so I've got the receiver extension tube tightened down. Here it is. One of the reasons I wanted to try this version of the Ace, the other one I've gotten was the push button one, which is really nice to operate. But this one actually has the same shape as the rear AR. And because these Noveski receiver extension or receiver end plate QDs are so nice, I wanted to get one because it would fit up with that. Fits up well. Alrighty, now we're gonna put the base components back together. Okay, there it is. Phase one is complete. The whole ass end's been reworked. Still have the hand guards and optic put on up front, and I gotta do something about the muzzle device. Looking good. It feels real good. Here we are with the stock folded. You can still you can still operate it with the stock folded. So here's a preview of what else is going on there. I have a Shepherd's Crook, a Tapco G2 trigger pack, Midwest Industries handguards, specifically for the Draco Mini. And that is a little red, not a red dot, it's actually a green dot. I think it's a primary arms optic that was given to me by a good friend for free. So more to come. Stay tuned. Other uh, shout outs to Haas USMC. Dude, this thing's rocking. We'll take some video of shooting it. Next time you come visit, let you fire it. Take care, dude. Okay, we're here at phase two of the Draco Mini mod. So I pulled it apart in all the components ready to put some handguards on. So here's the stock handguard and uh, we'll see what it looks like as we're putting the Midwest Industries handguards on. Here are the Midwest Industries handguards laid out. They look like they're really easy to bolt on. Not like on the larger Draco where I had to dremel a bunch of stuff to make them fit. but. These are special Draco Mini handguards, and they look like they're going to work really well. Here it is with the lower rail snugged on. Unlike the full-size Draco, the Draco Mini is really hard to index this thing right. And the fit and finish isn't really that great either. Look at these giant holes coming into the receiver. The Midwest Industry standard handguards on a standard size Draco seemed to fit it a lot better. I'm surprised they have they didn't fill those holes in with something. We have the Midwest Industries handguard on now. And here's the optic and go on top.
lot of people thought that people were just trying to make up a bunch of uh, trench guns and riot guns. So does it have indents? Or are no, you it, supposed there's to... no indent. I think you just force this back and torque it down. But then... There's a spacer. What? It's kind of like a low-budget crank.